Hey, so you feel like you're going crazy, huh? And to top it all off, the people around you don't understand what's happening to you. Heck, you don't even understand what's happening to you half the time these days. And boy, do I know how you feel. I've been there and I know how difficult it can be to have these feelings like you're losing your marbles. But I want you to know that this is a temporary phase and that it's actually a part of a deeper spiritual awakening. So really, feeling like you're going crazy is great news because it means that you're going through a deep transformation and that your life is going to get way better, even if you can't see that right now. In this video, I'm going to help you understand why we feel crazy sometimes during a spiritual awakening and then I'm, I'm going to help you work with those emotions so that you can get out of this process more quickly. Roll trailer. What's up, beautiful soul? This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist here to help you open your heart, heal your past and live with purpose. This video we're talking about feeling like you're going crazy. And this happens to so many of us on the spiritual path. I get tons of emails and comments from people who they reach me and they're kind of in a state of panic because they feel like they're actually going insane and they don't have anyone around them to help them. So I'm shooting this video for you. If this is what you're going through right now, I've been through this too. So I know what you're feeling. And I've shot this video in two parts actually. In the first part, I'm going to help you understand why we feel crazy sometimes when we're going through a spiritual awakening. And then in the second part of the video, I'm going to share five key tips, but they're very practical tips to help you work with these feelings and these thoughts. And, and that'll help you get out of this process of your spiritual awakening more quickly. All right. So on to part number one, why do we feel like we're going crazy during a spiritual awakening? Well, it all goes back to the ego and I'm not going to get too deep into the ego because I shot a video about it and it's going to pop up right here on your screen. So if you want to review the ego, uh, check out that video. But for the purposes of this video, your ego is basically a mental construct that you have about yourself. Okay. So the ego constructs your identity. It's a mental construction of your entire identity. All right. Now the ego during a spiritual awakening has a really hard time. <laughs> okay. Because the ego is a structure that builds itself to seem like it's really solid. <laughs> All right. And I actually made a drawing so that we can, uh, so that I could illustrate this better. I made a drawing here in my chalkboard, AKA my dining room pillar. <laughs> so let's go over to my chalkboard <laughs> so you can see this better. So the ego basically is like this box right here. Can you see this? Yeah, there you go. All right. So the ego is like this box. It creates this really strong identity. It makes it seem like you have an unchanging personality, like everything is set in stone in this box. You have your whole identity. You have your desires, your thoughts, your beliefs, who you think you are in the world. Everything is contained in this box. But do you know what a spiritual awakening does to the box of the ego? It does this. That was not the smartest thing to do. Anyways, moving on. Ah, we're back. So do you see what a spiritual awakening then does to the ego? It basically crumbles the ego. It destroys your whole sense of identity. It just disintegrates your whole sense of identity. So do you understand that now that you see it from this kind of process of crumbling everything, do you see why your ego is going through this process of thinking that it's crazy? I actually have a quote from one of my favorite quotes on, on spiritual awakening. It's from spiritual teacher Adi Ashanti, and I'm going to read it to you so that you can get a deeper, uh, feeling for, for what enlightenment he calls it enlightenment. I call it spiritual awakening. I don't like to use the term enlightenment, but it's the same thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to share this quote with you so that you can get a just deep feeling of what this spiritual awakening process does to you. So here's what Adi Ashanti says. Enlightenment is a destructive process. It has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It's seeing through the facade of pretense. 
It's the complete eradication of everything we imagined to be true. So you see how this process of that box of the ego completely disintegrating, you see why it's painful and why it causes inner turmoil. It's because the ego is disintegrating. And as it's disintegrating, it causes these, this inner turmoil, these thoughts like I'm going crazy. I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> okay. I remember this phase really, really well. Um, I think I shared in some of my other videos that I got to a point actually where I one day walked by a mirror and I looked over and for the longest time, I didn't recognize the reflection staring back at the mirror, <laughs> staring back in the mirror. So that was really frightening for me. And this period in my spiritual awakening where I felt like I was going crazy, it was really, really painful for me, especially because I come from a clinical background <laughs> and not just come from a cl clinical background. My clinical specialty was neuropediatrics. So it was, <laughs> it was brain and nervous system. So imagine a clinician going through this spiritual awakening and getting to the phase where I start thinking I'm going crazy and it was exacerbated by the fact that I knew so much about the human brain. So, <laughs> so every day I would sometimes sit in meditation and I would think I'd be thinking my clinical mind would come online and I would be thinking, wow, you know, I'm going insane. You know, maybe I'm schizophrenic, you know, well, schizophrenia is really rare later on, but maybe, <laughs> so my mind would just keep, my clinical brain would just keep going, trying to diagnose myself with all these things that might be going on. And so it made my own process of the spiritual awakening, this process of feeling like I was going crazy. It made it even more intense because of my career background as a clinician. So when your soul pierces through during a spiritual awakening, as your soul is piercing through the shell of the ego and causing it to kind of crumble like that box crumbled, it's really frightening and it causes the ego to kind of go in a little bit self-sabotage mode. All right. But at the end of the day, know that this process, this feeling like you're going insane is very common. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> you're not actually going insane. It's just the ego having a really hard time to deal with this, the deep spiritual changes that are happening in your life right now. So now that you know a little bit about why you feel, or you start thinking these thoughts that you're going crazy during a spiritual awakening, that takes us to the most important part of the video. And that is how can I work with these thoughts? Because they're really intense and they're painful and they cause a lot of difficulties in our lives, right? They can cause us to go into panic mode. So it's really important. This part of the video is the most important part because I'm going to share five key practical tips though, that's going to help you stay in a state of calm and ease. So you get through this process a lot more quickly. Okay. So what to do when you feel like you're going crazy. The first tip is understanding why you're having these thoughts and these feelings. And if you've come this far in the video, you already know, because I've already shared with you the reason why the ego goes into this kind of insane mode. All right. The knowing the reason understanding was key to me. You know, the more that I understood that I could work with the thoughts, the more understanding you have about why a certain thing is happening to you, the easier it is to work with it. It also calms understanding calms the ego and reassures it. So that's the first tip. The first tip you've basically already done. And that is understand why your ego starts creating these thoughts of you're going insane or you're going crazy. Okay. Tip number two let go of the need to define yourself. <laughs> this is a super important one because as your whole ego is kind of falling apart, as your whole sense of identity is disintegrating and dissolving, it's really important to just let go of any need to define yourself. Because here's the thing, when your ego starts dissolving, it's not going to stay dissolved forever. <laughs> well, there are some rare cases where the ego dies and stays dead. You know, there are sp some spiritual teachers that don't have an ego, but I think for the majority of us, the way that the process works is that your ego dissolves initially with the spiritual awakening. 
And then you enter this phase where it's kind of like a no man's land. All right. So the ego dissolves and you start, you actually start to experience more peace. Your ego is in a dissolved state. You feel like you're in this no man's land where you don't need to define yourself. Your old self is dead and you're just kind of going with the flow. But then sooner or later, the ego comes back online, a new ego, it rebuilds itself. And it's really important in this phase that when your ego starts to rebuild itself, again, this is normal. When the ego starts to rebuild itself, you, the observer of the ego, you, the soul behind the ego, it's important that you let go of any need to define yourself. Okay. And I'll give you an example of how I had to work with this in my own life. Okay. So before my ego said, you know, I'm a clinician, I'm a woman, I'm gay, I'm whatever. Uh, you know, I have all these college degrees that that's how my ego used to define myself. Then I went through the spiritual awakening, the ego died. And then suddenly I became a life coach and a spiritual teacher and a YouTuber or whatever. Okay. So you see the ego started to rebuild itself. It started to rebuild a new identity for me. But what was different about this second time around about the rebirth of, of my ego is that I no longer held on to my identity with an iron, an iron grip. Like I did before, before my spiritual awakening, I was really attached to my identity. I was really attached to who I was. It was a way for me to kind of value myself because I didn't value myself. So before my spiritual awakening, I held on really tightly to my identity, but after my spiritual awakening, I didn't really care. So, you know, when people ask me what I did, I say, I'm a life coach or I'm a YouTuber, but I say that with no grip, no attachment. I don't really care about those labels. I just use them to kind of define myself, to connect with others and to kind of have conversations with people. So I don't use it as a, as a way to define myself anymore, you know, to, to bring value to myself anymore. I just use, I, I kind of just let my ego identify itself, but with a really, really open hand without becoming attached. And this is super important not to get attached to any definition of yourself when that new ego comes online. The third tip, and probably the most important is to let go of projections from others. Okay. Now this is super important because when you're going through this spiritual awakening process and when your mind starts thinking that you're going crazy and you're going through all this inner turmoil, don't think that the people around you won't have plenty of opinions about what's going on with you. And they're going to want those opinions. They're going to throw them onto you. Okay. It is super important that you stand strong in who you are. You may not know who you are. You may be going through this crazy transformation and you have no idea who you're becoming, but you can still stand strong in not letting other people's projections affect you. And this is really important because when you're going through this phase, I mean, think about it. If your ego is dissolving, you're in a bit of a sensitive state, right? Because your old ego is dissolving. Your new identity has not been built yet. So you're literally in this phase of being in no man's land. So the projections and the opinions of others can easily influence you in this critical moment of your spiritual awakening. So it's really important for you to remember to not let the projections of others affect you, especially the people that are closest to you. This is super important. You'd think that it would be common sense to just accept the projections of the people that are closest to you because they mean well, well, not really, <laughs> not really. Yes. The people that are closest to us very often mean well, but if they're not having a spiritual awakening and have no idea what's happening to you, then their projections and their opinions can actually harm you and they can actually set you back on your spiritual path. So in this respect, I was really lucky in my own life because when I was going through the craziness of my spiritual awakening, I had a really supportive family and I had some friends, some friends dropped out of my life, but I had other friends that were really supportive. And even though they didn't understand what was happening to me, I would just simply say to them, you know, I'm going through a really deep change. I don't know what's happening to me half the time, but I need you to respect this time and not impose on me. Okay. I need you to give me space. And so when I communicated this to people, to my family, you know, they were very respectful of, um, 
you know, of this time and of this transition. I had a couple of family members that judged me, you know, that stopped respecting me because I just left my clinical career and for, and became, you know, was doing videos on YouTube. And so for some family members, it was kind of like I had, I did a step down in my career by abandoning my clinical career. So I did have a couple of family members that, that judged me in that way, but I was able to hold strong in my position, even though I didn't know really deeply what was happening to me day to day. I was still very trusting in the universe. I was trusting in my guides. I was trusting in source. I knew that I was being guided in the direction that I was supposed to go, but I really had to hold strong. So this is going to be the same for you. Okay. So if you have a partner or family members or friends that are really just throwing their opinions on you about what you should do. You're going insane. You need to go, you know, see a psychiatrist and get on medication. There's a ton of things that people around you are going to say about what you're going through, but listen to me. Don't forget my words. You have to stand your ground. Okay. Stand your ground. And if you need to connect with other people, connect with people that are also going through a spiritual awakening, because that's what makes sense, right? Because you'll be understood <laughs> and, and they'll understand what you're going through. And so that connection will be easier. It will help you versus listening to the opinions of people who have no idea what's going on in your life. Even if those opinions are from the people that are closest to you, it's really important for you to remember this. Okay. Remember this, no matter where the opinion comes from, you must stand strong, knowing that what you're going through is a natural process of the spiritual awakening. And you'll just going to, if they, if people have projections and opinions and judgments, you're just going to let them go in one ear out the other, and you're going to move on and remain centered regardless of what anyone around you is saying. Okay. The fourth tip I discussed also in my video on the ego that's, that's up here if you want to see it. But the fourth tip is to quiet the ego. You must quiet your ego in one way or another. You know, I used meditation a lot. Um, I used, you know, I would dance. I would do multiple things at the same time to try and quiet my ego. I especially love the use of soothing mantras because that was just, that was transformational in my own, in my own journey. The more my ego felt like I was going crazy. If I, if I repeated these soothing mantras, sometimes multiple times a day, because I was going through a lot of inner turmoil, the more I repeated these soothing mantras, the more my ego began to quiet and calm down. So I would say mantras like everything is okay. Um, there's no danger here. This is happening for my highest good all is well, this too shall pass. <laughs> okay. And I could keep going on and on, but I want you to make your own mantras. Okay. Make your own mantras that are soothing, that calm the ego and that quiet the ego. And other than mantras, use meditation, dancing, be out in nature, do anything that you can to quiet your ego. The more that you can quiet your ego, the more the thoughts about you going crazy disappear. The fifth and last tip is connect with your guides and with source. <laughs> I can't tell you how fundamental that this was just so important for me is that during this phase, this critical phase of my spiritual awakening, where my ego was a bit fragile, where it was completely just disintegrating. It was a really frightening phase of my spiritual awakening. And I bet it is for you too. But when I began to every day try and connect with, not try, I would connect with my guides and with source energy, the more that I connected with my guides, the more, um, the calmer I felt, the more at peace I felt. All right. You have to remember that your guides, your angels, you have an entire spirit team at your side. They're constantly waiting for, to help you, but you have to give express permission. Okay. Remember that this reality is a reality of free will. So you can have an entire legion of spirit guides, but they will not intervene in your life until you give authorization because your free will cannot be violated, not even by source. So it's really important to connect with your guides, it, not just when you're feeling like you're going crazy, but this is, this is for everything. Really. Whenever you feel like you're in, in any kind of inner turmoil, connect to your guides, connect to source because they are there and their energy really helps you. It helps you so much. You are so loved and so guided. And I know that sometimes people say to me, you know, I can't hear my guides. I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I can't feel source within me. I have no idea how to do this.
And, and, you know, I know that sometimes it could feel this way, but trust me when I say this, even if you can't feel your guides, they are still there and they are doing everything they possibly can to help you. And the more you connect with them, the more you will feel their presence. The more connected you are with source and with your guides, with your spirit team, the more this transition, the more these thoughts that you're going crazy, they'll start to calm down. You'll feel more and more at peace the more you connect with source and with your spirit team. So when it comes to, um, you know, giving authorization to your spirit team to intervene in your life, I use just broad affirmations. Uh, um, I sometimes say them still, I still use these broad affirmations, um, just to give my guides, uh, open, um, you know, just open authorization to intervene in my life. So I could say something like I give my guides permission to intervene in my life as they see fit. Okay. So that's, that's one, um, that's one affirmation that you can say, but make up your own. Just be very certain that you say it out loud or you think it very strongly. I give permission to my guides to intervene in my life. Okay. This is necessary so that your guides can come in and help you more and more. But now I want to hear from you. <laughs> do you feel like you're going crazy sometimes? And if so, what do you do to kind of help you calm down or center yourself? Have any of the tips in this video been helpful for you? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe here to my channel or head over to my email list where I share exclusive content that I don't share anywhere else. And if you enjoyed this video, check it out. There's more over here for you to watch. I love you, beautiful soul. I am out.